progress. Hey, everybody. Real Estate Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I've got a great story for you today about literally homeowners losing $2.3 trillion in value since June. But if that's not the part that gets me excited. I am going to show you how companies like Zillow and Redfin literally mask the truth. They're always trying to be eternal cheerleaders. They're trying to make you feel positive wherever you are, wherever we are in the real estate market, because why? They make money when you buy or you sell real estate, and they want to keep the velocity going, and they really want to try and keep the velocity on the buying side of real estate. That's what makes a healthy real estate market, right? If there's a lot of buyers, even if there's a lot of sellers and few sellers, the buyer's or what makes up the uh, feeling of how good the real estate market is. Now, look, guys, I am a licensed real estate agent, but honestly, I'm the worst one in the world. Why? Because I am an investor first and foremost, and I have a hard time selling people things when I know that we are seeing housing drop off a cliff. I've been talking about this for a couple of years. I want to show you something, a correction that was made to a story a year ago. And we're going to do two stories, the loss of $2.3 trillion in real estate values over the last not even year. We're talking literally three quarters of a year since last June. And then a retraction, a correction that had to be made. And literally the reporter had to report that Redfin actually said it's actually twice as bad as we thought back in May. Okay. So follow me guys. First and foremost, I want to tell you guys the 80% pre-filming discount for the real estate crash course is almost over. I'm going to end it in a week and a half. The reason why is because I've just put the, we have seven lessons left. I just shipped off five to the editor. I only have two more to complete next week. So we're looking to end that 80% off discount. I just don't want anyone complaining like you said it was going to be a deal. And it's, that's a pre-filming discount. So we've got what three quarters of the course completed and uploaded right now. I'll put a link below to it. Here we go. Check this out. This gets me super Super pumped because it's so easy to prepare for a real estate correction. So let's start with this story, okay? Real estate, U.S. homeowners have lost $2.3 trillion since June, and this is Redfin data. Again, Redfin's been in the news like crazy because they're trying to get their name out there over Zillow and other, uh, uh, other of their competition uh, websites. Uh, because they want to be out in the forefront. But I'm going to show you some pretty crazy stuff. Here we go. U.S. homeowners have lost $2.3 trillion since June, according to a new report from real estate brokerage Redfin. The total value of U.S. homes was $45.3 trillion at the end of 2022, down 4.9% from a record high of $47.7 trillion in June. Think about that. The national housing value, all the homes, have just lost almost 5% in not even the last year. That is staggering. To say that we have started this crash is an understatement, and I want you guys to be ready because it's actually so darn easy to get ready for this. Now, it says the report comes amid increased mortgage rates as the Fed tries to curb inflation. The 30-year mortgage rate sat at 6.36%. But as of just, you know, the reporting of this, mortgage rates have even climbed higher, okay? So it's going to get worse in the near term and I believe in the long term, all right? Now, it says Redfin highlighted the Bay Area, noting that the region has seen the biggest drop in real estate value compared to other parts of the country. For instance, the total value of a San Francisco home fell 6.7% in December alone. Now, I'm going to do a whole other story about that um, because I think the Bay Area of California is very important for you to understand no matter where you are in the country because it will affect you. I'll do another video about that soon. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button, this is not the same channel as my brother's channel, The Economic Ninja, okay? Uh, check this out. U.S. mortgage rates rebound. 30-year fixed rate average in the United States. Look at from 2006 to 2008, and I go over this very in great detail in the real estate crash course because I show you how to learn to, to find out where we are in not only the interest rate cycle, the mortgage rate cycle, but also in the Federal Reserve's um, rate hiking or rate lowering cycle so you can make educated decisions about when you want to dip into the market and when you want to dip out of the market, all right? I've been a real estate investor. I sold all of my homes actually right here. This is when I started liquidating all of my homes in 2006. And I wrote it out and saved myself um, because I've been an investor since 2001. Now look at this rate of, of drop right here. This is when the economy was hurting really bad. They needed a good reason to get out of that. And they were they had a great excuse to run mortgage rates all the way down to here, right? Now, Look at this epic rise. We have not seen a rise like this since 1981. This is 1981-82 since Paul Volcker spiked rates. This is epic, absolutely epic. And people think that just from here to here, 
we're out of the woods, but we're not. It's this was priced in for a very special reason. And that has to do with the Federal Reserve, the uh, pivot that a lot of people are expecting. Now, let me do this. We've already talked about the amount of money that's been lost, 2.3 trillion, literally just about 5% of the total value of all real estate uh, in, in the country, right? Not even in the last year. Let's look at this. Let's go back to May, right? May is a very important uh, month. Well, actually check this out. And this is why. It talks about, the uh, market dropping in June, right? Right here, the record high of 47.7 trillion in June. That was the peak, right? That was the point where uh, property owners or buyers figured out, oh my gosh, I can't afford, I could afford the mortgage back in May at the house I was looking at. Literally from May till June, it spiked so high, I cannot afford the mortgage on the house I wanted in June. And at that same time, inventory was flooding the market because a lot of sellers were figuring this out as well. And it's gonna get worse. Check this out. This is from May. Home listings suddenly jump as sellers worried they may miss out on the red hot housing market. And boy, did they miss out. Check this out. A lot of homeowners listed their homes way too high. They missed the bark. They missed the boat. But I'm going to show you the very last uh, uh, paragraph in this article. And this is why it's so important to read through all of these articles in depth and go back. It's so important to go back. But let's go first before I show you this last uh, paragraph and how important the correction was. Let's look at the key points. The supply of homes for sale jumped 9% last week compared with the same week one year ago, according to Realtor.com. Real estate uh, brokerage Redfin also reported that new listings rose nearly twice as fast in the four weeks ending May 15th as they did during the same period a year ago. And then pending home sales, a measure of signed contracts on existing homes dropped nearly 4% in April, month to month, and were down just over 9% from April of 2021, according to the National Association of Realtors. These are staggering numbers, but these are this was back in May. It's gotten way better than that, all right? Or when I mean better, I mean worse. Let's look at this last, uh, last uh, paragraph right here. Check this out. By 2021, the monthly payment was only up about 100 bucks. This month, with prices rising another 21% and mortgage rates surging to around 5.5%, the monthly payment hit $1,991, almost $800 a month more than it was in 2019. Here we go, check this out. While home sellers were in the driver's seat barely six month, months ago, they are now seeing far less competition from buyers. A demand index from Redfin, which measured measures requests for home tours and other home buying services, was down 8% year over year during the week ended May 15th. This was the largest decline since April of 2020, when the pandemic paused most home buying activity. Now, let's stop right there. Down 8% year over year. Back in May, I would have been reporting that's a staggering number, but I'm telling you, not everything is... Uh, not everything is right on the surface. You have to dig deeper. These numbers are going to be wrong. I was reporting a year ago that you're going to see worse numbers next year. Uh, later in the year, we're going to see worse numbers and you're going to see revisions. I talk about the term revisions all of the time and people need to understand this is how bad it is. Here is the point. And this is why it's so easy to see these cycles once you have the right training or around the right mentors to, to identify them. And that gives you peace and patience to wait and prepare to buy up houses like they were going out of style. Check this out. It said it was down 8%. Here's the revision. See right here, this little part at the end of the, the story. This was put in later. I wish they would have put the timing of when they did it. Correction. April sales of newly built homes, also measured by signed contracts, dropped a much wider than expected 16% compared with March, according to the U.S. Census, an early, earlier version uh, misstated a month. We're talking about double, twice as bad. You are going to see more revisions like this. Oh, yeah, the market's way worse than you think. And what I mean by that, why it's so easy to see this, is I lived through this in 2006. I liquidated all my properties, my flip properties, my uh, multifamily units. I liquidated as fast as I could because the market was collapsing in 2006. It wasn't until the public figured it out in 2008 when they're all losing their homes. 
we are about to see that later in this year and in 2024, you are going to see foreclosures that will just amounts of foreclosures will blow your mind. And so that's what gets me excited. It's so easy to figure this out. And then once you understand the cycles, the full big picture, it's so easy to go back and go, oh man, I'm going to be able to take advantage of this. I'm going to be able to set money aside. I'm going to be able to prepare my mind, get the knowledge and understanding now so that when everything's burning down and everyone's going, you're nuts to be buying real estate. I go, no, I understand the other side of the cycle and I'll be selling these homes back to you. Guys, that is why I built the course. That is why I'm trying to warn people right now. If you haven't seen this channel, the Real Estate Ninja is separate than the Economic Ninja. Whatever my brother does over there, whatever. I'm the one better here. Point being is this. It's so easy to see the cycles. This is super exciting. Put down in the comment section what you're seeing in your hometown. A lot of hometowns aren't seeing a lot of price difference. And the reason why, it's not a lot of homes on the market. And there's still enough buyers to soak up that inventory. But pretty soon, get ready. By the end of uh, 2023, you're going to see fireworks because you're going to see way more inventory hitting the market. And I have a feeling, sad but true, I think you're going to see some of those really pointing towards the foreclosure route. So it's not going to be sellers that want to sell. It's going to be sellers that have to sell. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching. The Real Estate Ninja is out.